Hi friends, I'm Terry Runyon, visual artist and creative encourager. And once again, I've been kind of absent on YouTube, so I thought I'd jump on here today. Today I'm going to show you how I do pen and ink, plus I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I generate ideas. We are just at the tail end of Inktober, which is the Instagram prompt list for October. I'm gonna give you a little insight into what I do when I'm coming up with ideas, as well as demo my art for today. And that's gonna be around the prompt hide. So when I'm looking through Pinterest, which I'm gonna do in a moment, I'm looking with that open mind. I usually start with looking at the actual prompt for the day and illustrations. So today I'll look at hide illustrations and I will see what other artists have done. And then I just kind of let that whole thing go and I just kind of rifle through just anything with illustration or drawing or anything like that and sort of just open my mind to what might come up. And oftentimes what comes up is just images or an idea and I usually will go with the first idea that comes up because I'm known for getting completely lost in researching and getting nothing done. This is the way I used to operate in the past. And I really recommend that when you notice inspiration come to jump right in because oftentimes, most of the time with me, if I don't move on that, when not one ear and out the other before I know it. So the first thing I do is I might look up hide illustrations and I will rifle through Pinterest and look and see what other people have done for this kind of prompt. There's a lot of different ways to look at this here. They even have a hide one on cats. So I just love this one. This is awesome. So I look through here, found a you know, a lot of things done with black cats, which I think is a great thing to do for this Inktober prompt where I'm going to be using India ink. I'm also going to be using cut paper. So I'm going to do a little combo collage here plus India ink. And after looking through Pinterest a little bit, I've decided I'm going to go with plant containers and some plants and see what the kitties will do with hiding with these. So uh, this is not something I have drawn out. I've done a tiny little drawing here where I'm showing a couple little kitties and possible ways to hide a cat. I have my papers already chosen. I'm doing a monochrome kind of a palette because I think that goes really well with the black ink. So these are the papers I'm using. Some of these are, you know, the trusty old paper from a paperback. I've got some just regular newsprint paper. some of that same paper with some pattern on it. Got some hand painted papers here, which are fun to use. And a blow up of the inside of an envelope. This is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna set these aside for now. Get the cat hair off. So today, I was, as I was going through Pinterest, I showed you how I looked through the hide illustration stuff and then I usually just go through just random things on Pinterest to see if anything comes to me. So I've decided to move forward with these uh, pots with plants or vases with plants and work my hiding kitties around that. And you never know what else is going to show up when this is happening. So I'm going to start with the cut paper pots and go from there. When I'm cutting out my papers, I'm trying to do a few of each pattern so that I kind of tie it all together so I don't have an odd one out. So right now I've got a couple darker patterns and a lot of this neutral tone pattern. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the dark stuff to this growing illustration. As I'm arranging and rearranging these little pieces of paper, I'm keeping in mind that I'm gonna have plants in them, so I have to have a little room. 
Plus we know some cats are gonna show up, so I don't wanna completely cover the page with these shapes. And uh, I might have too many here. We'll see if they all stay. I usually use Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength Glue Stick. And I, I like this and have had pretty good luck with it. It is acid free. I have a link to this below. Well, I'm done with the gluing for now. I don't know if more paper will come on here as I go along, but I'm gonna break out the uh, India ink with Crow Quill pen. So I've got my supplies here. This is kind of a mixture of ink. I just throw any ink I get into this container because I like the way this container sits on the desk. And this particular one is a speedball. It started as a speedball ink, but it is now a mixture of inks. And then I'm just using a Crow Quill pen. I do have links to my supplies in the information section below. I like to keep some tissue around because sometimes the ink will blob and I like to dab out the excess ink so it doesn't take two years to dry. Also, if you're gonna come back into your illustration with watercolor, you really need to make sure that ink is dry. If it's at all wet or tacky or anything like that, it will bleed into your watercolor. So I've had trouble with that in the past and I realized that I can't rush it. I also have, of course, the trusty hair dryer to use if I get impatient. So I've got my little drawing that I did and a Pinterest up with some plants so I kind of have an idea. I don't stick to those things very tightly. I usually wing it and see what comes. And uh, sometimes I have happy surprises. Sometimes they're just surprises, but either way, I feel really good when I'm creating and it's the process that for me makes all the difference. Staying present, and seeing what shows up. So I'm gonna get started with the ink now. Another way to do this filling in stuff, which is a bit easier, is to use a brush when it comes to filling in. You don't get as much of the scratchy marks in the solid shapes, but it certainly makes it a lot quicker. My hand is a little shaky right now, and that's adding to my style. So I'm noticing my pen is not working right, and that's because it's got dried ink on it. So this is the time I give my pen nib a good clean, using tissue just to wipe it off, and then I will sometimes also dunk it in water and then wipe it off again. Later on, I might give it a more thorough clean, but during this process, I, I usually do a quick and dirty clean and call it good. So this is an example of where the ink got too puddly and I'm going to come in and just use the tip of the tissue and dip it into that ink and sop up the excess. 
This way, the chance of me putting my hand in it is a little bit less, and also it doesn't take forever to dry if it's not as thick. Another opportunity to clean up some excess ink. Okay, I'm done with the pen and ink part for now. I'm gonna add a little watercolor and somebody's here to say hello. Thanks for visiting, Tucker. Hey, I wanted to let you guys know while I'm at it, a little plug for some new books I have out. Draw 62 animals and make them happy. It's uh, full of animals, including cats, so you got some of those in there to play with, and I have the Draw 62 Characters and Make Them Happy book. And so there's all kinds of fun characters in there doing fun stuff. So if you're into doing storytelling, this is a good book for you, along with this one. If you just want to learn to draw characters, they're both great for that and animals. I will link to those below in the information section. So as you can see, Tucker's joined me for this part of the video. Hi Tucker. Hopefully this is dry. I can see some of it isn't, so I better keep the kitty out of it. Okay, stay there. I can put my pen aside for now. Glasses back on. I'm gonna get my brush, and of course I need to add cheeks because that's just something I enjoy doing. I'm also going to add a little shading to kind of ground these characters. And I'm not using ink because I don't want to wreck my brush any more than I already have. Ink can be pretty tough on a watercolor brush. So I'm using black watercolor and uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of this underneath my objects and around here and there. I get it nice and watery so it isn't too dark. Like I said before, you want to make sure your ink is dry before you do this or you'll be pulling your ink throughout your, your painting here.
One last thing. I'm going to come in with some Posca white fine line pen to just touch up a few things. If you use this really sparingly, you can get away with fixing some things. You just got to use it sparingly. So I'm going to do that and then I think it's going to be done. Okay, I'm going to call this done. It was a lot of fun to work on and it took a lot more time than I thought it was going to, which is why I always speed up these videos. So if you're looking for getting more ideas, I would recommend looking through Pinterest. You can search the prompt on Pinterest as well as just open your mind and let the images go by and see if anything sparks a little bit of creative juices. And remember, jump in when it happens. You can do more researching after you complete this piece that you just had an idea about. And uh, if you keep researching, the chances are you're not gonna remember that idea. So just take it from me, someone who is addicted to researching, it's best to jump in and jump out as quickly as possible, get that idea and then go for it. So I hope you guys have a great day. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my links below for any supplies that you're interested in. And I'll be talking to you soon.